What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have an eight-game MLB slate tonight. Lock is set for 7.05. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave it a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. The video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page. It can be found on FanDuel TV Plus, And it can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Let's hop right into things today. Uh, let's get to the weather. And we are looking very, very clear. Again, we're starting to see some cooler temperatures uh, for several ballparks. There's no cores field on tonight's slate. So we are looking at a pretty, pretty good spot to start the week. Let's just jump right into the pitching slate where it's certainly an interesting one with Freddie Peralta leading the way. At ten thousand eight hundred dollars, followed by Justin Verlander at ten point five, Zach Wheeler at ten k, Eduardo Rodriguez at nine point eight, Brian Wu at nine point seven, Jordan Montgomery nine point five, Michael Walker at nine point three, Lance Lynn at nine point two, and Mike Clevenger at nine thousand dollars. We all, again no course field, and it's an interesting slate for several reasons. Where the pitching matchups just aren't super ideal for some of these top tier pitchers. When it comes to Freddie Peralta at 10.8 leading the way, there's no doubt that his 31.2% strikeout rate is something that we absolutely want in our lineups, but we're not in love with this matchup going up against the Cardinals, who don't strike out at a high clip. They're also a pretty solid offensive team right now with their current active roster versus right-handed pitching. The Cardinals come in with a 19% strikeout rate, which is the third lowest in the league. They also come in with a 112 WRC+, plus, which is the sixth best in the league. And they come in with a 176 W uh, a 176 ISO, which is the 11th best in the league. So they're putting up some numbers on offense, and they're also not striking out a whole lot, which doesn't necessarily present the best matchup for Freddie Peralta. Then we have Justin Verlander at 10.5, and he's not striking out hitters at nearly the same rate as Freddie Peralta. He also has a difficult matchup going up against Baltimore, which we don't love. Zach Wheeler is $10,000, and Zach Wheeler is absolutely an awesome pitcher coming in with a 27.3% strikeout rate, a super low 4.9% walk rate, only allowing 0.98 home runs per nine, but he's on the road taking on the Atlanta Braves, who are coming off, a, I would say, a somewhat of an odd three-game losing streak after getting swept by the Marlins. The Braves are back at home, and it doesn't. it's not a lineup that we want to be actively targeting pitchers against. Then we have Eduardo Rodriguez going up against the Dodgers. Again, a pitcher that we don't love to go, or I would say a, a, a lineup that we don't love to take pitchers against. That would be the Dodgers. This could turn us to Brian Wu at 9.7, turn us to Michael Walker at 9.3, or even Lance Lynn at 9.2. And I think this is where we'll see a lot of people fall with their line of construction. I think Freddie Peralta is a great pitcher. I think Zach Wheeler is an awesome pitcher. He And frankly, Zach Wheeler might be the best actual pitcher on tonight's slate. But I, I don't like the matchup going up against Atlanta. Freddie Peralta, he has that strikeout upside. So the point of making up at the top is that Peralta, Verlander, Wheeler really don't check off a whole lot of boxes that we love tonight. Sure, the strikeouts can be there from Peralta and Wheeler, but we're not in love with the matchups that they have, specifically not you know, with Wheeler going up against Atlanta. So these pitchers, I think, could make better tournament options just because they have expensive salaries, and we do have some viable options that are a little bit less expensive, again, combined with the fact that we don't love their matchups. So this is where I think Lance Lynn and Michael Walker could come into play. Now, I'll be the first one to say that I think Lance Lynn is a good pitcher. He's by no means the best pitcher on tonight's slate. He also has you know, a lot of potential downside due to the fact that he still struggles with home runs. He's allowing this season 2.21 home runs per nine. He has a 23.8% strikeout rate. He has a 7.9% walk rate. He comes with a 4.25 Sierra. He has a 42% fly ball rate, which we don't love to see. He is still mainly a medium contact pitcher at 49.6%. So it's a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to Lance Lynn. But there's no doubt that this match is one that we love. Uh, going up against the, the Detroit Tigers, they come in with a 24.7% strikeout rate with their current active roster versus righties, which is the sixth worst in the league. They also come in with an 85 WRC+, plus, which is tied for last in the league. And of course, they don't have a whole lot of power. They come in with a 141 team ISO versus righties, which is 28th in the league. So 
we have a lot of boxes checked off for Lance Lynn, who has shown some really nice strikeout upside at times this season. And frankly, his matchup is, is probably one of the best that we're going to find on the slate. I did also mention that Brian Wu is on the slate for the Seattle Mariners. They're also in a spot where coming off a bit of an odd three-game losing streak, I guess it was against the Dodgers, so it's not that odd. But he has a great matchup going up against the Oakland Athletics. We see Wu coming in with a 24.1% strikeout rate, a 7% walk rate. He's only allowing 1.07 home runs per nine. He has a 4.09 Sierra skill interactive ERA, 54.7% medium contact rate, and a 40% ground ball rate. He also has a 40% fly ball rate. It's even across the board. Obviously, this is his rookie season coming in from a 75.2 inning sample size. So up at the top, if we're dealing with some question marks, why don't we just go down a little bit and take a little bit of sour relief with Brian Wu at 9,700 or Lance Lynn at 9,200, who just factually have substantially easier matchups compared to going up against Atlanta, you know, going up against the Cardinals, going up against the Orioles for these top three pitchers. We could also be considering Michael Walker tonight for the San Diego Padres. And, you know, 21.9% strikeout rate is nothing to get excited about. 8.5% walk rate, you know, is right on the edge. The only reason that we'd be interested in Michael Walker tonight is due to the fact that he's going up against Colorado, who come with a 25.4% strikeout rate versus righties with their current active roster, which is the third worst in the league. And it's the worst among teams on this slate. They also come in with an 85 WRC plus versus righties, which is tied with Detroit and Oakland's not too far behind. They're at an 89 WRC plus. So, we're dealing with Detroit, Colorado, and Oakland, who are just factually some of the worst teams in the league, specifically in this matchup versus righties. They, they're all in the bottom six of the league, right at the top six of the league, whatever you want to call for the highest strike rate versus righties. And they all come in with WRC pluses sub 90. So it really is a good matchup for Wu, Waka, and Lynn tonight. And this, I think this is where people will be falling just because yes, Wheeler might be the best pitcher on tonight's slate, but I'm not running to get pitchers against the Braves in my lineups. And also, you know, we have some powerful offenses on tonight's slate. We're certainly going to want to be stacking them. And, you know, Lance Lynn at 9,200 is pretty solid. So when we take a, this step back again, we have no course field on tonight's slate. The Rockies are on the road visiting the Padres. You know, we're in a spot where we can almost fade these top three pitchers. Now, if you're rolling out one lineup, and you want to go for that massive strikeout upside, yeah, I think Freddie Peralta might be that player. Uh, if you want to go for a, a complete off-the-board play, you want to pivot, you know, Zach Wheeler might be that under-the-radar option just because, you know, people don't like taking pitchers going up against Atlanta because, again, they can pop off three, four home runs before you know it. So I do realize the fantasy potential that Peralta and Wheeler have just based on their individual talent. The matchups are not something that I love. I love the matchups, you know, anytime we can attack lineups, like Oakland, like Colorado, like Detroit. These are teams that we want to be attacking. And, you know, frankly, we do have some good options between Wu, Lynn, and Walker. So if I have to be ranking them tonight, of all pitchers on tonight's slate, you know, I think Wu and Lynn might be tied for like 1A, 1B. I think Peralta is clearly number two just based on his individual talent. We could, we could say the same thing about Wheeler, but I just don't want to be going there. So I think that's where Walker would come in. And then if you want to roll with, uh, a Verlander slash Wheeler there just to differentiate your lineups as you're rolling out more and more lineups uh, multi-entering. That is certainly the way to go. So you could say uh, Wu and Lin are my two favorite pitchers on tonight's slate. Let's get to the stacks. Again, we have some powerful offenses that we could certainly want to go to. Uh, you know, again, the Braves, they're coming off this like three-game losing streak where they, they kind of got handled by the, the Marlins kind of handled the the Braves putting up a ton of runs over the past few days. Wheeler's a great pitcher. Like as I said, there's no doubt about it. He is truly one of the elite pitchers in the league. I don't love taking lineups going up against elite pitchers, but I also realize the potential that the Braves do have. So getting some exposure to the Braves is never a bad thing. Uh, but realistically we do have other great offenses outside of the Braves tonight. So if you want to just have if you're rolling on multiple lineups and you just like always like to have some exposure to the Braves, do so. I think it's a great option tonight. We have the White Sox, which are certainly in an interesting matchup going up against Johan Adon for the Washington Nationals. And frankly, the, the White Sox are just not a good team. And I think the White Sox 
the best way to approach him tonight would probably be just going to Luis Robert as a one-off for the clear power upside that he does have. We have a number of other teams that we should be looking at as I would say the top three kind of priorities on tonight's slate. One, I'm going to say would be the Milwaukee Brewers going up against Adam Wainwright for the St. Louis Cardinals. Wainwright just does not have it this season. He comes with an 11.3% strikeout rate, which is so, so low, allowing 1.91 home runs per nine at 8.5% walk rate. He comes with a 5.85 skill interactive ERA. Obviously, that is terrible, and he has a 37.6% fly ball rate. Not to mention the fact that he has a 366 Babbitt, which is batting average of balls in play. He's constantly getting hit around. He's not striking out hitters on the plate. You know, single here, double there, a walk with his 8.5% walk rate, home run, walk, single, you name it. Wainwright is a pitcher that we love to target. And yeah, I'll be going back to the Brewers, a team that's seemingly coming up time and time again over the past few weeks because they are so, so friendly when it comes to lineup construction. Christian Yelich, Christian Yelich at 3.3K is the most expensive hitter on the Brewers, and he did not play yesterday on Sunday uh, dealing with his back thing. So if he does not play, William Contreras at 3.2 would be the most expensive hitter for the Brewers, followed by Willie Adamas and Carlos Santana at 3.1 and 3K. So this is a lineup that we uh, should be very interested in stacking because of the salary relief that they bring to our lineups. They're not overly expensive. And frankly, they have a great matchup going up against Adam Wainwright. Again, a pitcher that is just allowing way, way too many home runs, way too, just too many hits overall. Now we do we could get even further salary relief from the Brewers depending on who's in and out of their lineup again dealing with some injuries they uh, you know recently signed uh, Josh Donaldson they brought him up he's twenty six hundred he's got that power versus right he's obviously he also strikes out at, at a high rate but twenty six hundred for a player with that kind of power in this split the what is it, the Brewers have a four point nine nine implied run total tonight so yeah he may strike out a lot but the power is clearly there for someone like Donaldson at. At 2,600, Mark Connor, you can also go to, who has a 121 WRC plus since joining the Brewers, which is very, very solid. And then, of course, go ahead and get up to Contreras up the top, which would be great. Santana and Adamas would be the top three hitters for the Brewers. Let's also move over to the San Diego Padres. You know, we talked we talk about Waka. Uh, we want to be going there potentially for pitching. We also want to be going to their hitters tonight, going up against Ty Block for the Colorado Rockies. We look to block the season 13.5% strikeout rate, 1.41 home runs per nine. He only has a 6% walk rate, which really isn't that bad, but he has a 338 Babbitt. He comes in as well with a 513 Sierra. He's not giving up too many fly balls. It's only a 33.2%. He's not giving up too much hard contact. It's at 36.8%, which is still something that we can work with. And yeah, there's a lot of power when it comes to the Padres lineup. So it should be another team that we're willing to go to very, very regularly tonight. They obviously, uh, you know, Grand Slam for Juan Soto the other day. And the top of the lineup, this is a lineup that we should be looking to stack. And they're relatively expensive tonight. Soto at 3.9, Tatis at 3.8, Machado at 3.5. Whether Hassan Kim is in the lineup or not, he's uh, day-to-day right now, he's 3.2. Xander Bogart's at 3,000. This is a lineup we want to be trusting when it comes to the power that they have. We look to Tatis with a 250 ISO versus lefties is something that we want in you know in each and every lineup we could possibly get Manny Machado's now up to a 189 ISO but he still has a, a very very solid 139 WRC plus he started off the year super super slow but he's turning around with a low strikeout rate and he's still putting the ball in play he may not have as much power as he's had in years past but the contact and the production is still very very clearly there for him same thing with Juan Soto a 122 WRC plus and comes in with a 166 ISO versus lefties, but of course, one of the elite hitters in the game. We want him in any single stack we could possibly get. Now, if you want to take some shots on someone like Trent Grisham, a little bit lower, that's certainly something you could look to do at 2,700. Yes, it is a lefty-lefty matchup for Trent Grisham, but still, we'll be getting to the Rockies bullpen at some point, and that's not a spot that I'm particularly worried about. So whether you get pro far in your lines because you're taking a little bit of sigh of relief, uh, you want to filter in some Xander Bogarts, who's you know, doing okay this season. I think that's certainly fine, but really Soto Tatis Machado should be the clear top three options. And frankly, yes, they have higher salaries at 39, 38 and 3,500. But if we're taking a pitcher like Lance Lynn at 9,200, it's really not that difficult to get them into our lineups, considering we do have plenty of sour relief when it comes to the Brewers as well tonight. Let's move on to 
another stack. Or I should mention that we, again, we have the Dodgers on tonight's slate. We have the Braves on tonight's slate. Don't want to particularly talk about those two teams. They're generally givens. We have no course fuel on tonight's slate. So I'm always going to be interested in the Dodgers. I'm always going to be interested in the Braves just to have a few lineups here or there. Very interested in the Brewers tonight going up against Adam Wayne, right? Very interested in the Padres going up against high block. I also think that we want to be considering Seattle. And as I said, Seattle, uh, they got swept over the weekend by the Dodgers. And this is kind of like crunch time for them. They are in a very, very tight AL West slash wild card race. Like this is a, a matchup against Oakland. Like this is just like their get right spot, right? They, they just need, you know, face an easier opponent. Let's just call it what it is compared to the Dodgers. They're now facing Oakland. They just need to get some runs on the board. I don't love things. I I love the matchup tonight for them going up against JP Sears, but the game's in Oakland, right? And it's a little bit cooler in Oakland tonight. And we know that this is just one of the best pitchers parks in the league. So I have to put them kind of like third on the list, a little bit lower priority, just based on, you know, the hitting environment where if it's going to be nicer in San Diego, it's going to be nicer in St. Louis. I'll certainly take those over a place that's a little bit cooler combined. The fact that it's a massive pitchers park in Oakland. So I absolutely love Seattle tonight. I just don't love some of the external factors with the park. So we have to take them, you know, maybe third on the list uh, behind the Padres and the Brewers. And if you, of course, want to put the Dodgers and the Braves up there as well, that is certainly something to do. When it comes to J.P. Sears tonight for the Oakland Athletics, he comes in with a uh, a 21.6% strikeout rate this season, 1.77 home runs per nine allowed, a 6.7% walk rate, nothing we need to be worried about, 4.65 Sierra, and a 53.6% fly ball rate is absolutely awesome. And when we look to his individual splits versus lefties and righties, he's allowing a 538 slugging to lefties and a 444 slugging to righties. 1.74 home runs per nine to righties, 1.88 home runs per nine to lefties. This is something that we love to see. A 47.4% fly ball rate to lefties and a 55.2% fly ball rate to righties. So this is where the power could be for Seattle. And yes, we want to start things off each and every... Stack from the Mariners. We want to start it off with Julio Rodriguez coming in with a 144 WRC plus versus lefties along with a 184 ISO. He is $4,500. He's one of the most expensive hitters on tonight's slate, but he's certainly well worth it in this match. Again, kind of just a spot where Seattle needs to get some runs on the board. Just like get right spot after kind of a tough weekend. Now, I understand that Rodriguez is super, super expensive and he's not only expensive in terms of the entire slate, but he's expensive relative to his teammates where JP Crawford at 3,100 is the next most expensive hitter on Seattle after Rodriguez at 45. So there's a 1400 salary difference from the most expensive hitter to the second most expensive hitter. So getting stacks for Seattle is easy. If you leave off Julio Rodriguez. Now, ideally we would get Rodriguez in every single Seattle stack that we're making, but of course that may not be the case if you're paying up for some Padres, if maybe you want to take a shot on one of the pitchers that are above 10K. So I love Julio Rodriguez tonight, but outside of him, the, the hitters that I'd be focusing in on would be getting someone like Teoscar Hernandez in my lineup, 248 ISO versus lefties coming in with a 134 WRC plus. He is 3K tonight. He's got to be one of the best all around hitters uh, relative to his salary, relative to the matchup and the power that he has should be in a lot of lineups tonight. Very, very simple. Cal Raleigh, 181 ISO in this split versus lefties. Now, he comes in with a 71 WRC+, plus, which is extremely low. He has a 31.5% strikeout rate. So the consistency is not there from Cal Raleigh. The power is there from him, but ultimately, it's going to get to the Oakland bullpen at some point, and I assume they'll bring in a righty, and he's much better in that split as well. Look to Eugenio Suarez. I think that is certainly fine. Uh, and then mix in players like a Ty France, uh, whatever it might be, whoever ends up filling out their lineup. You know, Dylan Moore is not a player that I'm like running to get into my lineups, especially depending if he's hitting lower in the lineup. But I'd rather stick with Crawford, Raleigh, Hernandez, you know, Hernandez being first, but uh, in that mix. And then and then Suarez, assuming you can't afford Julio Rodriguez. He should, of course, be the number one priority when it comes to stacking Seattle. All right, so let's get to some dinger calls to close things out. Uh, two pretty clear ones tonight, uh, you know, especially given the matchups that we have. And it's going to be Fernando Tatis for the San Diego Padres. Love this matchup that he has going up against Ty Block. I think that one is pretty straightforward. And then I got to roll with Julio Rodriguez, J-Rod. Uh, just a great matchup for him. 
Uh, and again, this is a spot where the Mariners really, really need to put up some runs, you know, kind of uh, get things on the right track after a few losses in a row. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. As a reminder, it can be found all over the podcast universe, whether it's Spotify, whether it's Apple Podcasts, all on the FanDuel Podcast Network. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. The video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page. It can be found on FanDuel TV+. Plus. It can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck in your contests.